and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. So on my leather apron video here, I had asked the question of whether or not you thought I should try out one of those $100 leather sewing machines from Amazon. And I got really mixed reviews. With some of you saying like, absolutely give that thing a shot and other ones being like, no, it's a piece of junk, just save up for like the $3,000 machine. But as I am simultaneously cheap and love a challenge, I figured, why not give it a shot? So this episode is that episode. I'm gonna walk us through unboxing it all the way to my setup and how it actually works. Perhaps from this information, you can glean whether or not you wanna give it a shot. Just to be completely clear, this one here is the machine we're talking about. I got it from Amazon from like $115, I think it was. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out too. So right off the bat, I will say this showed up really fast. I think I ordered it on a Tuesday and it showed up on that Thursday. That being said, this box was beat to shit from the beginning. Only some of this was me starting to rip into it before I realized I should probably have this on camera. Most of that was, that's how it showed up. Which could just more be a shipping issue than the actual manufacturer's issue. First thing I ran across in the box was this little diagram sheet here, which honestly was so faded, I couldn't read it anyway, so barely useless, I guess. And the second thing I noticed is that everything in this box was absolutely covered in oil. Though seeing how most of this is unpainted, untreated steel, I think that was more of a rust deterrent than anything else. So that as well, I'm gonna give a slide, but I ah, get it, oil, a slide. But I did need gloves to finish unboxing this thing. In the box though, and this is what I will pin on the manufacturer, everything was just kind of thrown in there. As I was taking everything out, I noticed there was just nuts and bolts kind of in the bottom of the box kicking around. Nothing was kept together cleanly. And I honestly had no idea where anything went, like what anything went to. So I was kind of lost taking it out of the box. Now I know a lot of this sounds pretty negative so far, but this is just me understanding why people give that initial negative review. I think if you are expecting this thing to come like out of the box and you're gonna know what's going on and whatever, this this isn't that. It will help if you are mechanically inclined or like YouTube videos. For my process though, I started by piling everything up in the groups that I thought went together. This way I can kinda tackle them in some semblance of order. Starting with this stand here. Now this is where unanimously people have said on the reviews and stuff to just out the box, get rid of the stand. And I can see where they're coming from this. These legs just kind of slide into this plate here and are not very sturdy at all. And with how heavy the rest of that machine is, it's, it's definitely gonna dance all over the place. So task the first, making a stand. Now for that, with just what I had laying around, I decided to use this block O wood here that used to be a shelf to act as the base of my stand. Though the way the sewing machine operates, it has this big metal disc here that acts as the crank and would totally hit into my base unless I either cut it away or raised it up somehow. So digging through my scrap pile, I was able to find this piece of four x four that would work perfectly for raising this thing up. First though, I needed to clean this whole thing off because I was getting real tired of working with all that oil everywhere. So to clean it, I just used a piece of paper towel with a bit of alcohol on it. And while doing this, I finally got a really good look at all of its bits and pieces and saw where people called this rough. All the pieces are really solid, but they definitely had like a lot of gouges and sloppily milled pieces. The welds are kind of gnarly looking, like it, it is a rough machine. And even simple details, like this screw here being a little bit too tall, is gonna make a sticking point where the leather runs over. Like that, that's the spot that the leather is gonna run over while I'm sewing. But I suppose putting a nice spin on this machine, I will call it rugged. Very utilitarian. You definitely need to do some cleaning up to make this thing how you want it. Okay, so back to that stand. My thought here is to use this more solid piece of maple to actually mount the machine to, rather than connecting just to that pine block. This is because I really wanted to use these threaded insert nuts that I found. These things are really cool. They just kind of screw into the wood and give you a place to secure a bolt into. This way I don't have to like build a frame with like a hollow underneath to have like a nut and a bolt and, and put it together. I can just screw directly into the wood. So with that all figured out, I positioned the sewing machine so I can mark my wood to length. And then it was off to my cutoff saw to make a mess. And I made a mess. I definitely need a dust collector of some sort. Not only that, but there was still a significant amount of oil just around and all of the sawdust stuck to it. It was miserable. Anyways, this left me with this nice little block and topper. 
To connect the two, I just clamped them into position and then drilled some pilot holes for my screw. Now, I wanted to keep everything nice and clean and flush looking, so I went back in with this countersink bit just to give the head of my screw some place to go. Without those, the heads would stick up a little bit where they start to taper and look kind of messy. Now they sit nice and flush. I mean, just because the machine is rustic doesn't mean my work has to be. So with that little riser block all put together, I sat my machine in place and marked where the mounting holes would go. Then I pre-drilled those with a 3 8 inch drill bit and secured those threaded inserts into place with an Allen wrench. And this is why I really wanted that hardwood on top. It's gonna make sure it holds that threaded piece in place without pulling out like pine knife. Now again, in the spirit of keeping everything nice and clean, I went over all of it with an orbital sander just to smooth out all my tool marks and kind of round off those edges a little bit. Cool, so with that all ready to go, I just positioned it where it would go on my base plate and clamped those together. Then I flipped everything over, pre-drilled my holes, used my countersink bit again, and then secured everything into place with these four inch long screws. You could probably get away with shorter screws, but again, since my block is pine, I wanted all that extra thread length just in case it would wanna pull out over time. With that secure, it was really easy to mount my machine, just securing it in place with some quarter 20 bolts and locking them down with a ratchet. And this seemed to work really well, like just by itself it was pretty secure. Though I did decide I needed one more support under this arm here. Just because with how far it sticks out, that's a lot of leverage. And again, I really don't want any of these threads to kind of pull loose. Now I wanted the support to kind of be small and out of the way. So to make it, all I did was measure out the distance underneath that arm and cut a block that fit really snugly underneath. Once in position, I used my pencil to mark how wide the arm was, and then it was off to the bandsaw to cut a little foot that started wide at the bottom and then tapered to what I needed it to be at the top. Once that was all cleaned up on my sander, I just tapped it into place and then pre-drilled and used the countersink again so that I could secure it with some wood screws through the base. And there you go, my little cobbled together stand. Get it? Because it's a cobbler sewing machine. This stand is it's cobbled. Anyway, I might stain it or paint it or whatever later, but I'm really eager to actually like see if this machine works in the first place before I put the work in. For starters, I needed to put on the crank plate here that actually operates the whole thing. It just mounts onto this little bolt on the side here and is secured by this nut. Now on the back of this crank, you're gonna see it has these two grooves here, as well as this little keyway on the mounting hole. That little keyway marries to this screw on the mounting bolt. And those grooves match up to these bearings that are mounted here and here. All you have to do is match up the keyway and make sure those bearings slide into those grooves. Then secure the whole thing in place with the nut. The only other part I really ended up using from the pile of stuff I found in the bottom of the box was this threaded rod here with a nut on it. That I discovered just kind of screws into the hole at the top and is where you mount your thread spool. Oh, on the side attached by some wire too is also some extra bobbins and a shuttle, which I thought was nice. They actually decided to keep everything in one little group rather than just kind of throw it in the box and hope for the best. Now say what you will about the construction of this machine. With everything in place, it was actually really cool to see how it worked. Just to watch how turning the wheel made this little armature here move, which is what controlled the needle. And then on the other side, this offset little lumpo metal is what moved this armature, which is what controlled the stepper foot. It's just a really fun, simple machine that has like very specific timing the way everything works together. And all it is is, is just bent pieces of metal that make that happen. I think that's pretty cool to look at. It. It's neat to dissect a thing that way and then you can come up with ideas for yourself if you want to make a thing being like Alright, well, how would I make these two different actions correspond with each other? It's also nice to see that they had this little sewn piece of leather here to so that they've actually tested that the machine works before sending it Which I was hoping was a good sign that you know, it actually works I mean it is a really simple machine, so we should be able to get this thing to work Oh, another nice thing the manufacturer did is they actually left it all threaded so you can see how it goes together. Following it, you can see that it goes through this little hole in the arm and then around these two tension washers here to keep it snug. Then it went up through this little ring o spring here on the side and then up and over to this little armature here before finally diving into this tube and coming out again just above the needle. And this honestly was a lifesaver. Like I wouldn't have been able to figure out how to spool it all through and, and where it all went without it already being there. So now I'm eager to set this thing up myself and see if we can make it work. First, I opened up this little area here to reveal where the shuttle and bobbin is hidden. Now heads up, this thing was a bitch to remove. I had to use some needle nose pliers to do it. I just couldn't get it out any other way. 
and the bobbin itself is in kind of rough shape and really in need of a cleaning. Now the actual loading of the bobbin, I think it's super rustic again, I guess, but I kind of dig it. All it is is this little rubber donut mounted on a spring assembly here that when turned makes contact with the crank and rides along its edge. You just press the bobbin in place and now it'll spin so you can actually spool the thread onto it. So to actually spool the thread, you first pass it through that little hole in the armature that we saw earlier. Then you've got to give it a few windings around the bobbin just to get it started. From there, you put it in place and keep a little bit of tension on your hand while you crank the wheel to spool it on. This is far more manual and labor intensive than like the, the electric sewing machines we're used to nowadays. But I kind of like that. I'm okay with it. Like there's something to be said about a ritual of a thing. Like I can use a belt sander, right? But sometimes it's nice to really get in there and, and, and play with the wood and actually the, the ritual behind working with a thing sometimes is all those little tasks you have to do in order to set yourself up for it. And this particular one with this kind of a machine, I'm actually okay with. I like that. I think that's neat. That being said, I had no idea how to load this bobbin into this shuttle. I had to look that up. So I learned. You've got two holes in the top of this shuttle and two holes in the bottom. The hole that's closest to the screw is slightly bigger and it's for when you're using larger thread. Since I'm using kind of a standard size thread, I'm passing it through the bottom hole that's further away from that screw first. Then winding that behind the tension spring before bringing it up through the top corresponding hole. Now, as you can see, when I pull on the thread, the bobbin is turning clockwise. This is incorrect, and it took me it took me a little bit of screwing around to figure out this is incorrect. It should turn counterclockwise, so if you pull it and it turns clockwise, just pop it out and turn it over, and you're fine. With that all set up, I just pop that whole assembly back into place. Now, on the machine, there's actually a little groove cut in right there where you pop it in place that the thread needs to run through before you can shut that little door there. This will leave the tail kind of hanging out loose like so. All right, so with the bobbin all set, it's time to thread the rest of the machine. And to do this, I just kind of copied how it was threaded before, going through the arm, then around those little tension discs here, making sure to give it a little pull to actually seat the thread between the discs. From there, I went up through this little spring ring that's on the side of the machine, and then up through the hole in this little armature here. Okay, so next we actually have to put it down that little tube there so it can come out by the needle. And to do this, you really need a little tool. Luckily, in the box, they actually gave me this little piece of wire here with a hook on the end. But if you don't have one, I mean, it's, it's a little piece of wire with a hook on the end. I think you can manufacture it. All you have to do is send that wire up through the groove that's just above the needle and out the hole in the top. Then place your thread in the little hook there and just pull it all the way through. Once there, all you have to do is thread your needle and you're ready to go. By turning the crank, the needle and thread plunge into this little hole here and then bring up a loop from the thread of the bobbin below. With that all set up, we are at the moment of truth. We can actually test if this works. For this test, I'm using this piece of seven ounce leather that I folded in on itself. And I am blown away at how easy this thing works. I feel zero resistance while I'm sewing this leather and the stitches come out super straight. Not only that, but I'm able to change direction at any time just by turning the piece. Look at how clean those stitches came out. Like I am genuinely impressed with how well this thing Oh, also, I learned that by adjusting this little screw here, you're actually able to change the length of the thread. I played with this and just how fluently I could move while sewing to create this little arcing spiral here of different thread lengths. Knowing that, this thing is actually crazy versatile. Like, you can follow really intricate thread patterns. You can use thread as kind of a decorative thing. It holds together really strong. Like, it, it won't come apart very easily at all. I am genuinely impressed with this. That said, its operation was kind of rough, like cranking it felt a little bit rough, and the, the leather kept getting caught up on the screw here. Remember how I said it was sticking up a little bit? So to take care of that, I just went back in with a file and brought that screw all the way down to flush. And then I went back in with various grades of sandpaper, just until it was really smooth. I got this thing down to a nice polish. And now the leather doesn't catch it all and I don't worry about it marring it up. It feels good. As for the rest of the operation, I ended up getting this three-in-one oil and just applied it everywhere there was like a rotation point. So like where this arm moves, I added a little bit in here. I saw in other models, they seem to have actual holes that were specifically put in place for you to add oil to. This one doesn't seem to have those same ones that I saw online. But everything is open, it's all really accessible. So if I wanna add a little bit here, I just add a little bit there and we're good to go. And look at it now, look at how easy that moves, look at that. I love it. 
works so good. So my verdict, is this thing worth the $115 or should you just save up your money and wait for like an actual professional kind of sewing machine? My answer is it depends. Really it depends on you. Are you the kind of person who is okay with like fixing and, and remilling stuff and putting things together and kind of reworking it to be your own special little thing? Or do you just want something that'll work out of the box, you really don't care with fiddling with machines, and you'd rather it just work? If you're that first person, absolutely. I love this machine, especially for what it's for. It doesn't have a lot of fancy bells and whistles, so if you're looking for a lot of different kinds of stitches, or you want other like adjustable things kind of put into it, it's probably not the machine for you. This is for, you know, it's a cobbler's machine. It's for kind of straighter stitches you'd normally see on like attaching an, an upper to a sole or something. But honestly, as like a hobbyist or someone just learning this skill, this is gonna do everything I need it to do. And I'm super jazzed because I don't like hand stitching. It's pain in my ass. And I have a great project coming out next week that you're gonna love, but it it really requires me to use this. But I, I am very pleased with this purchase. I like this thing a lot. And I wanted to give a special shout out to my Patreon members, without whom I wouldn't be able to even buy things like this. With your help, I'm gonna be able to level up even more skills and make some cool stuff. In fact, special thanks to Vinny C, our newest high tier level Patreon member. If you'd like to support what we do here and help us grow our tree, why don't you consider joining the Patreon? Link in the description below. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see me cover, why don't you leave it down in the comment section here and I'll add it to the list. All right, I should get going. I have to make the templates for this project that you guys are gonna freaking love. Super excited about it. Super excited about the help this is gonna give me with it. In the meantime though, keep leveling up you. Thank you for sticking around to the end screen. YouTube algorithm loves it when you do. They also love it when you like and subscribe to my channel. So if you enjoyed what you saw here, why don't you do that? Finally, why don't you check out one of these videos down here? I think you'd like those too.